Do you know what the word Halloween means? Do you know why people dress up at this time of the year? Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Now, some of you may remember from listening to our earlier episode this month that the word Halloween is an old Celtic word. Really, two words meaning hallow, holy, and Ian, which is short for evening. So on this holy evening, the 31st of October, the night before the Feast of All Saints, it became a time to celebrate the triumph of good over evil. People dressed up in costumes as a way to ward off the ghosts who they believed scour the earth on this night before the beginning of winter, before the Feast of All Saints. And many of our Halloween traditions that we still carry out today stem from the ancient Celtic pagan festival called Samhain, which is a Celtic word meaning summer's end. And so, today's story is an old tale from Scotland that takes place on this day of Samhain and celebrates the triumph of good over evil. Before we begin, a huge thanks to all of you, our wonderful listeners. A thanks to you, as you heard last week. We have over one million downloads. Yes, you heard me, over one million downloads. And we get notes and drawings and messages from so many of you from all over the world telling us how much your children enjoy this podcast, which makes me very happy. Do keep sending us your drawings and your messages and tell us what your favourite episode is because we love to hear from you. Let's take a journey with Tam Lynn. Long ago in Scotland, near the woods of Gartahoch, there lived a young lass by the name of Janet. Now all her life Janet had been told, as all the other lasses and lads nearby had also heard, never to enter the woods near Gartahoch, for there lived fairies who had been known to cast evil spells and make mischief for any intruders who dare to draw near. But as she grew older, Janet grew bolder and less afraid of all these tales she'd heard. "'Doesn't my own father own all of the land here anyway?' she said to herself. "'There is no reason I should be forbidden for going there.' And so one day Janet wrapped her green mantle over her shoulders and headed for the Gartahoch woods. As soon as she stepped into the forest, she caught a strong, sweet scent of roses, and following the aroma she found herself in a clearing brimming with sweet-smelling rose bushes. She bent down and plucked one single ruby red rose, and she breathed in its beautiful perfume. Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of her. So you like roses? said a tall elfin man. Roses that do not belong to you. Startled, Janet stammered, Who who are you? Then mustering her wits, she added, I will have you know my family owns this land of Gartahoch, and one day... My name is Tam Lynn, said the elf man, interrupting her. And I guard the forest for the fairy queen. This is not a safe place for a young lass like you. Oh, have no fear on my account, said Janet. I can look after myself. But if you know so much about this forest, why don't you be my guide? The elf man bowed and said, Very well, come follow me. He led Janet further into the forest, showing her all sorts of wonders and marvels that lay nestled among the pine and birch trees. Amber poppies, dew-speckled toadstools, silver gossamer spider's webs, and clusters of bluebells. 
The hours flew by, and soon it was time for Janet to bid Tamlin farewell. Come again, fair lass, he said as he kissed her hand. And the next day Janet returned to Gartahach. And every day after that, for weeks and months, she and Tamlin became the best of friends. But one day, Tamlin looked pale and troubled. Oh, what ails you? Janet asked him. Does it worry you that I am human and you are not? Oh, do not let that concern you, for I care not one whit about that. Oh, my dear lady, said Tamlin. Of course I know you are good and kind and loyal and true. Ah, but I am afraid my burden is heavier than that. Tamlin beckoned for Janet to take a seat on a rock beside him. And then he began to tell her his story. You see, I was born a human like you. And when I was but more than a boy, I even became a knight. But a few years ago, I was hunting in these very woods when I was bewitched by a sleeping spell that made me fall from my horse. Then the queen of fairies whisked me away to be her servant. And so I have been at her beckoning these past few years. Every day I guard the woods of Gartahoch, and at night... I returned to her fairy kingdom. But even a life of this imprisonment would be better than what I just found out this morning. Oh, tell me, tell me, begged Janet. With a heavy heart, Tamlin continued. That every seven years on Samhain Eve, the fairies hold a ritual that allows them to keep their powers for the next seven years. They have a procession through the woods that ends at Miles Cross, and there they sacrifice a mortal to the spirits. And my lady, I am to be the next sacrifice. <gasps> but today is October 31st, whispered Janet, and tonight is Samhain Eve. I. And it is the seventh year, said Tamlin. I am afraid we must say our goodbyes now. No, it cannot be, Janet jumped up. There must be a way to break the spell. Tamlin paused. Well, there is one way, he said slowly. But it is so hard and so fraught with peril, so dangerous that I dare say no more about it. Oh, but you must, you must tell me everything. Tamlin sighed. Ah, well, if you insist, there is one chance, and it happens only when the procession approaches the circle of stones at Miles Cross, where the sacrifice takes place. Only then, for a brief time, are the powers of the fairy queen weakened If you want to save my life, you must hide behind a tree at Miles Cross tonight and wait for the procession to come by. Let the first steed pass, that be a black horse ridden by the fairy queen. And then let pass a brown horse. But run to the next horse, a milk white steed, and pull the rider down. I will be that rider. And when I fall, you must hold me fast. No matter what terrors happen next, your grip on me must last. But this will be terribly hard to do, dear Janet, because to break your grip, the fairy queen is likely to turn me into beast after horrible beast in your arms. Yet, if you can hold tight and not let me go, then no harm will come to you, and I'll be mortal again, forever. If you can do this, once the spell is broken, wrap me with your green mantle and cover me out of sight. He held his breath for a moment. My lady, that is the only way. And so they made their farewells, 
both troubled and anxious at what lay before them. Later that night, in a gloomy and dark, eerie stillness, Janet made her way to Miles Cross, and there she hid behind a large oak tree. Just before midnight, she heard the tinkling of bridles and knew the fairies were on the move. From behind the tree, she watched the first black steed pass, a horse ridden by the proud fairy queen. Then a brown horse rode by, followed by a milk-white steed. Janet bolted forward and pulled the rider down. Thunder rolled across the sky and the stars flashed as bright as day. The fairies skittered to and fro in a frenzy of confusion. Then the fairy queen pointed her bony finger to the fallen rider and called loudly, Tamlin! That moment in Janet's arms, Tamlin turned into a monstrous bear, snarling at her and frothing at the mouth. Janet turned her head from its hot, angry breath, but still she held on with all her might. A moment later, the bear became a scaly lizard, slippery and venomous, his red tongue flicking about her face. Janet closed her eyes, but still she held fast to the horrid creature. And finally, the lizard turned into an ice cold snake covered with slime. Janet felt it ooze down her back as the snake coiled around her, tightening its grip and almost choking her. But then the next instant, it had become a red hot cinder. Janet felt as if her arms and hands were on fire. But again, she steeled herself and held fast with all her might. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. In her arms was Tam Lin himself, fully human and laughing with delight. (laughs) Giddy with relief and joy, Janet remembered to wrap him in her green mantle. The Queen of Fairies rose to her full height, fuming with rage and anger. May she die an ill death, she screamed, pointing to Janet. For she has stolen the bonniest knight in all my company. But neither Janet nor Tamlin had any fear of the Fairy Queen now. They knew they were safe from her powers at last. With great rejoicing, they returned to Janet's home in the Grey Castle, where they were soon married in a grand and splendid ceremony. From that day forward, they lived in great peace and contentment, and every child in the land heard their story of how goodness conquered evil on the eve of Samhain. Well, what do you think this story's souvenir is? Yes, it's an easy one this time, isn't it? Good will triumph. It is exactly what one of my favourite poets, Julian of Norwich, tells us, and you have heard me say this before many times. Maybe you can even say it with me. All shall be well. All shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Be well, my listeners, 
And don't forget, if you want to enjoy a special bonus story, The Talking Pot, to celebrate Journey with Stories' third birthday, just go visit our new website at www.journeywithstory.com and you'll be able to get it there, along with a free colouring sheet. But hurry, this is just a special offer only for the month of October. Thank you for all of your amazing encouragement and support. Happy Halloween. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Story. Story.